Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new let's play of Europa Barbarorum 2, a total conversion mod for a medieval total war. This awesome game mod has been made by the same team that stands behind the original Europa Barbarorum, so we now know that we are in for a treat. But before I start, I would like to make a few things clear and actually relay the message that is the reason why I'm starting this Let's Play now. I wanted to wait for a few more months uh, because they have been updating this mod and adding more content, but the Christmas appeal that appeared at the Total War Center, I think it was Total War Center, by the team that stands behind Europa Barbarum 2 made me reconsider. They are determined to continue update this, updating this mod, they are determined to continue working, but they are in desperate need f of more manpower, I would say. They are lacking especially 2D and 3D artists, and they are quite desperate for them. So if any one of you, there's like three and a half thousand subscribers that are on my channel, and Europa Barbarorum 1 mod had like six or seven thousand views on the first episode. So any of you that are capable of doing 3D or 2D modeling, I would like to appeal to you in the name of um, the Europa Barbarorum team to go and sign up and help them. Because they've been doing this free of charge, you know, not bitching, just doing awesome job. And Europa Barbarorum 1 is the best mod they have ever created. And they redone this all to medieval total war so that they can expand on it and actually have way more content but this now really is up to us to help them i already signed up though i have no i have no 3d or 2d modeling uh skill or any ability at all but i have other qualities that i offered to them though I don't think they need those but again if there are any ones of you that are capable of 3D or 2D modeling just go and google Europa Barbarorum 2 and sign up because you will not only help them but you will make this game even better. Now with that said we can start the game and I can hope to <laughs> make you help to change your mind in case you are thinking this is not a game worth supporting. Now, I checked YouTube and to my amazement there is no let's play of the Romans, of Senatus Populusque Romani. So we are going to play as Romans because, believe it or not, I have never finished the game as Romans in the original EB. I have been challenged by my friend Volant to play as a different nation in the original let's play that I did. But for this one I'm just going to play as Romans because why the hell not, it's going to be fun. And let's see if we can uh, do this. Let's see if we can make it. So advice to the world, I'm gonna keep it on tell me everything because I have very limited amount of experience with uh, EB2. I'm gonna put the difficulty up on very hard and battle difficulty up on very hard. And now we are going to look on this description. So this is a wall of text, so feel free to skip it. But I want to read through it because it's interesting. All the descriptions in EB were interesting, so yeah. So, Senatus Populusque Romani, 272 BC. Difficulty moderate. Players with limited medieval to total war experience are encouraged to try this campaign first. Introduction. We have never feared anything that was human. But the divine Fortuna herself, we always dread her caprice, knowing her faithless and inconstant, and yet, for the very reason that in war she has always shown herself benevolent to this point, we expect and await some change, some rebalancing of things. We never act without first taking the auspices, both in public and private manners. We give the utmost importance to the omens, the augurs report, just as Romulus himself did on that first auspicious day of our great city's existence. We constantly offer rich sacrifice to our gods, seeking to maintain our 
deorum and conduct our business with crimson hands and stringing eyes. Even with favorable auspices and after victorious campaigns, freed from the threat from the threats of now defeated enemy, we dread the goddess wiles uh, goddess wiles, whether sailing on bare or bearing our spoils through a narrow pass. Nay, even after our joyous return, seeing the city full of rejoicing, congratulations, and happy sacrificing, still we distrust, knowing too well, perhaps, that Fortuna never conferred any benefit, unmixed with and unattended by rivers. Therefore, it is not in the auspices alone that we place our trust, but we also put our faith into the customs of our fathers, and the steel handed down from father to son, as the bane of our enemies. The chief glory and foundation of our Respublica, preserved intact up to the present through the steadfastness of our citizens, is the faithful bond of military discipline, and it is the gods themselves who have shown that this discipline, jealously conserved and cultivated, will win for us the leadership of all Italia, imperium over many cities, great kings, mighty nations. The jaws of Auxinus, the shattered teeth of the Alps, the raging gales of Oceanus, and the riches of the East, each shall yield itself to Rome, whose origin was in Romulus the cottage. Our scars have scarcely healed from our last campaigns, and they shall never disappear, but we shall remain victorious and unconquered, trusting in the gods and in Fortuna as well as we might. All of us, conscript fathers, the Senatus Populusque Romanus, our brothers and fathers, our sisters and mothers, we all adhere to mo Mos Maiorum and Pax Deorum for the sake of our sons and descendants, for our, greatest, for our great city and the Respublica itself. We trust in our past and in Fortuna's uncertain blessing. We trust in our courage and in our strong arms. We trust in our singular devotion to the gods. We trust, finally, in our own glorious future. Our soldiers are drawn from every rank of our society. Some of the multitude serve as skirmishers and in support roles, but it is clear where our strength lies, the heart of the Roman army, our heavy infantry. Our Hastati, Principe and Triari form the backbone of any force we bring to the field of battle. Our cavalry, few in numbers but brave, are composed of the wealthiest, the equities, or equites, equites, sorry. This force is bolstered by our new allies, such as the Marsi, Tusi and Campani, as well as other people who have wisely accepted our protection. It is the responsibility of all those protected by the Respublica in time of strife to defend Rome, her allies and her interests. This they do with vigor. While they might not be so fearsome as the Celti or as professional as the mercenary employed by the Grassi or the Carthaginians, each citizen and Solcius this is Latin Solcius know that fate should befall other befall their family should they suffer defeat in battle. Our advantage over the enemy lies not only in the determination of our citizens, but on the superior flexibility in battle of our regions. No foreigner shall ever enter Rome as a conqueror as long as the citizens draw breath. As indomitable as our armies have thus far proven, the Senate is aware of the numerous threats that conspire against the SPQR. They advise that there are a numerous issues what? They advise that there are numerous issues facing the Roman people at this time. Though our expansion within Italia has proven us with some measure of protection, the fierce Celti to our north harry our colonies and the farmlands of our allies, though through Etruria and Umbria. The Saluvi, Boi and Insumbras cover the land south of the mighty Padus. It is from their grasp that we must rest it. To the far north we hear rumors that the Transalpine Celti might be hard pressed by the still more ferocious neighbors across the fabled Renus, but there are more pressing concerns. Through the Samniti and are finally exhausted by too many Oh, though the Samniti are finally exhausted by too many long wars, the hosts of Pyrrhic Epirus remain in southern Italy, aiding our rapacious and remaining enemies. While we destroyed much of their forces, at great cost to ourselves, 
at Beneventum, we cannot allow such a foothold to remain. We may even consider accepting the offer of the Carthaginians to join them in an attempt to destroy Pyrrhus entirely, but perhaps it would be best to strengthen our own position in Italia rather than join in some foolish campaigns overseas. The eyes of Carthago covet Sicilia entire now that Pyrrhus' gaze has wandered back to Hellas, and we must ensure that they do not see fit to intervene in our affairs. If the gods so desire it, we will face them in battle perhaps, but for now they are uncertain friends. Finally, our agreement with individual civites, police and opidi have brought great wealth to us in trade. Should we wish to protect them, and ultimately our own interest, we must be prepared to send our citizens and soldiers to their aid. The threats and concerns of others, Graculi, Carthaginis, or even Celti, should not concern us. Do not place your trust in Punic faith. Trust not the Greeks bearing gifts or the perfumed eunuchs of the eastern princelings. No, we must trust in the ways of our fathers, the Mos Maiorum, the Auspicia, and the Pax Deorum. Only then should Fortuna, our uncertain patron, wish it shall we succeed. History needs to be written. So this is the introduction for the Romans. We are starting in a not so good situation or position, but we can quickly make it much better. Um, I admit that Romans are probably the easiest one in the beginning, but on the other hand, as you grow larger and stronger, Romans will be very difficult to play as they will face many enemies on all sides. So let's start and look on the entire situation. Okay, so here we are in the game. We have a choice to select a potential successor, which is a starting event. You may select the potential successor by following the instructions below. The potential successor will have an excellent chance to become the faction heir if the current heir dies or becomes faction leader. To read this, oh, to designate the potential successor, click accept. The roosters window will appear, showing you the family members and generals. Right or left click the portrait of the uh, FM and FM you would like to, redesign to designate as a potential successor. The trade will not be granted to the faction leader, heir, or any general. So these are our family members. Uh, you can see that we have quite a lot to start with. We have Lucius Cornelius Scipio. Oh, okay, well, I thought I could open him, but obviously I can't. Trait increase. Lucius Cornelius Scipio is a potential successor now. This man has been selected as potential successor to faction leadership after the current faction heir either dies or becomes ruler. Increased chance of becoming the next heir. So Lucius Cornelius Scipio, well, he's young, he's 27, has nice loyalty, nice influence, a bit of confidence and a bit of command. So let's start by revising the cities. Uh, we have quite a lot of faction announcements, we'll look to those later on. So we started with five cities, Rome, Capua, Arpi, Ariminium, Arim, oh yeah, it's Ariminium, Ariminium and Aretium. I need to uh, brush on my Latin. We have quite a lot of forces. We actually have... How many leaders do we have? I need to look into that. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I am a bit rusty on the entire... Yes, here it is. So we have... Uh, Admiral Quintus uh, is not a member of the family. We have... Uh, Manius, Curius, Dentarus, Manius, Valerius, Maximus, we have Marius, oh, Marcus, sorry, Marcus, Attilus, uh, Ragvu, Ragvius, Ragvius, okay, this is Ragvius, uh, Cneus, Cornelius, Scipio, Lucius, Cornelius, Scipio, and Caius, Ar 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 Avrelius, Caius, Avrelius, Cotta. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six family members. Uh, let's make it for an easy start as we have five cities. So one of them can actually become immediately the leader of our armies. Now, every city at this point is making us money. 
and we should be well on our finances. Yes, projected profits are 7,318 uh, denarii or minai, depending on what we would like to... Okay, it's not showing us. Okay, I'll just call it minai, that's what they were called in, in the original EV. Uh, every city that we have is uh, doing quite well, as you can see, except RP. RP is a very small town, only has wooden walls, Saucy Italy Sea, Italian allies, enables training of a lot of units. Strategy, the level of administration is reserved for those Italian regions without Roman citizenship or access to the Use Lati the Soci. These states had submitted to Roman authority, normally with obligations ratified by individual treaties. Each fidus or foedus was unique, but most contained military contribution and land concession. Having common cultural traits means that the Soci Italy have access to some factional buildings and are providing regional troops and auxiliaries to Roman armies. As the native cultures gives way to spreading Romanization through establishment of Latin colonies, the availability of local troops decreases, while Roman citizens' troops levied from these colonies become increasingly available. Cool, so RP is basically um, a frontal city that has nothing. Capua, though, is quite well developed. Yes, it has even a merchant fleet. Okay, aluminium is the same as RP. Again, a frontal city with uh, not much. Pacification regions, regional pacification. Okay, so this one is even worse. It's region recently conquered. The history of Roman attitudes towards conquest and conquered territory is complex. Between the earliest days of the Republican period and the height of the Augustan period, the methods of annexation and administration in newly defeated regions changed considerably. Let's look at the strategy. This is the precursor to the construction of any Roman government administration. It represents the right of the victor to decide the fate of conquered lands. It serves the purpose of temporarily overseeing the region in lieu of proper Roman institutions, generally by falling back on pre-existing local customs and practices. In anything other than the short term, the system is insustainable and it should be upgraded as soon as practicable. Okay, Aretinum has a bit more and has mines, so it's very useful. So basically only Rome and Capua are developed. And looking at it, even Rome doesn't have that many buildings. I thought we were starting in a better state than this. They probably nerfed it down from EV1. Okay, so uh, how many units can we raise? You don't have any army. And there's quite a lot of troops here. We have Equites Sabelli, Sabelli and the Medium Cavalry. May charge with our orders, good stamina, fast moving. The turn Sabellian encompasses most of the Oscan speaking tribes of Italy and includes the grouping known as Samnites, the Cani, uh, Bruti, Campani, and Apuli. The Sabellians are notable warlike people who frequently served as mercenaries of Greek armies in Italy and Sicily and who fought a series of wars against the Romans over a period of 50 years as Rome expanded into southern Italy. Even after Rome had conquered them, some Sabellians were always willing to rebel, joining the armies of Pyrrhus and Hannibal and finally launching the social war almost 200 years after Rome had conquered the Italian peninsula. When not in revolt, the Sabellians supplied roughly half of the manpower of Rome's Italian allies. Wow. The Equites Sabavi were the most common type of cavalry employed by the Sabellians and enjoyed high reputation. They probably made up at least one third of the cavalry strength of a typical consular army. These cavalrymen are armed with spear, swords, and two javelins. As some. F wait. Uh, a number of South Italian. Tomb paintings show Sabellian horsemen carrying round or oblong spinned shields and wearing crested and sometimes winged attic helmets with paired feather holders. Other striking helmets 
uh, are also portrayed. None wear heavy body armor. The triple disc curious and large muscled pectoral can be identified, but most wear no chest protection. All the girt with a broad bronze belt and greaves are sometimes worn, even by cavalrymen who are otherwise unarmored. Almost all are barefoot. Oh, they are. And on these we observe ankle bands which may mount spurs. Finally, all wear very short tunics which frequently fail to make the rider hindquarters any less evident than those of his horse. And Equite Sabevi are recruited from all of the Sabavian tribes of the Italian peninsula, from Picernum north of Rome to Brutium at the toe of the Italian boot. So their total defense is 13, their melee attack is 9, missile attack 9, and 11 charge bonus. Cool, so they're basically a uh, cavalry archerman. Then we have the Triarii, we have the Principes, Hastati, Hastati Sabevi, and Leves here. Interesting. In Rome we have nothing, as well as in Capua. Aurobinium has nothing and Arantium has certain troops. Huh. So what do we have here apart? Uh, Triariar, Triariar inspires nearby troops, bonus, fighting cavalry, and powerful charge. Powerful charge? Uh, wow. Charge bonus 28. The Triariar former Roman army's last line of heavy infantry. Like the rest of the legions, heavy infantry, they are organized into 15 maniples of 60 men each. The maniples are arranged in a line with gaps between them and rest on one knee while the first two lines of heavy infantry engage the enemy. If the Hastati and Principes are unable to win the battle themselves, they retire through the gaps in the line of Triarii. The Triarii then close the gaps in the line and enter combat like a hoplite phalanx to decide the battle. Each Triarius is armed with a thrusting spear and a sword. He carries a large round shield and wears a bronze helmet decorated with feathers, a plume or a crest. All Triarii wear some form of body armor and a pair of greaves. The Triarii are experienced soldiers wealthy enough to afford a hoplite panoply. Roman Triarii are recruited chiefly from Latinum and its immediate vicinity, while Latin Triarii may be recruited from any region where a Latin colony is found. Yeah, Triariar are badasses of our army. Then we have Principes, which are basically stronger Hastadi. Can swim, javelins from before charge, good stamina. And Principes have bonus fighting cavalry. Actually, Principes have spears. I found they had swords as well. Javelins from before charge, good stamina. And type of style. Oh, okay. Melee attack 10, melee attack 5, total defense. So they're slightly better armored. Yeah, Triarii 20. Jesus Christ, these are badasses. And Hastati Sabelli. They're actually better armored than the regular Hastati. Principes. Principi the Principes form a Roman army's second line of heavy infantry. Allegiance uh, Principes are Principes are organized into 15 maniples of 60 men, and the maniples are arranged in a line with gaps between them. They enter battle after the first line of infantry, the Hastati, tire and withdraw through the gaps between maniples. If the Principes are unable to defeat the enemy, they withdraw through the gaps in the third line of heavy infantry. Triarii and the Triarii finish the battle. Each Principe is armed with two javelins which he throws before engaging his opponent with a thrusting spear. He carries a scutum, a large oblong shield, and wears a bronze helmet decorated with feathers or a plume. All Principes wear some form of body armor and a pair of greaves. The Principes are men in their mid-twenties from farming families with enough wealth to afford the weapon and equipment described above. Roman Principes are recruited chiefly from Latium and its immediate vicinity, while Latin Principes may be recruited from any region where a Latin colony is found. And the last, the Hastati. 
The study consists of Romans Army 1st 25 Infantry, a region of a study organized into 15 maniples of 60 men and are the first to engage the enemy in coast combat. In most cases, they, their role is to wear down opposing troops. If they do, def do not defeat the enemy before tiring, they withdraw behind the second line of heavy infantry to the principes who carry on the battle. Each Astatus is armed with two javelins, which he throws before engaging his opponent with a short sword. Okay, so that's a huge difference. Uh, they have swords while the principes have spears. Uh, Sifos of Makara. He carries a scutum, a large bone shield, and wears a bronze helmet decorated with feathers or a plume. A few of the Hastadi may wear a bronze pectoral plate on their chest and a matching plate on their backs. He may also wear a grief or two to protect his lower legs. The Hastadi are primarily younger men from farming families with enough wealth to afford the weapons and equipment described above. Roman Hastadi are recruited chiefly from Latium and its immediate vicinity, while Latin Hastadi may be recruited from any region where a Latin colony is found. And Levis. Actually, these Hastati are spearmen. Yeah, can swim javelins for good stamina. We read this. Sabavian spearmen represent the prototypical Sabavian warrior. He's armed with an ob oblong spin shield, a pair of javelins, and a thrusting spear. He commonly wears an attic helmet with a crest, plume, or several feathered holders. Montefortino helmets are common too. Most have some form of ch chest protection. The triple discuris and both large and small pectorals, but some wear no armor at all. All wear a broad bronze belt and most are equipped with a pair of greaves. Finally, they wear short tunics that drape apron like in the front and back. Sabavian spearmen are recruited from all of the Sabavian tribes in the Italian peninsula, from Picenum north of Rome. To Brutium at the toe of the Italian boot. <coughs> Pardon me. And now we have the Levas, which are the skirmishers. We know these guys well from the previous Let's Play. New missiles and terrible defense. Yeah, armor one, defense skill six. Levas, light armed. The Levas, meaning light armed, are the light infantry of Roman legions and Latin cohorts. In battle, they are positioned in front of the rest of the army where they skirmish with the enemy until their javelins are exhausted or an enemy advance drives them behind the heavy infantry. They may also be called upon to pursue a broken enemy. The Levas are armed with a spear and several light javelins. They wear no helmets or body armor relying on speed and agility to preserve them from harm. The Levas are the youngest and poorest combatants in the army. Roman Levas are recruited chiefly from Latinum and its immediate vicinity, while Latin Levas may be recruited from any region where a Latin colony is found. What about our northern region? Uh, we got Sabavian, Chameleon, that's the same, but Etruscan Hoplites and Equitus Romani. Nice, weapon type crude. Inspires nearby troops, bonus fighting cavalry. Wow. May charge without orders, powerful charge, fast moving. The Equites are the cavalry of the Roman legions and cohorts of the Latin allies. Each region had about 300 Equites and a Latin cohort about 30. The Equites would generally be deployed on the flank of a Roman army. The Equites are armed with a spear and sword, carried around a cavalry shield and wore a fine bronze helmet. Polybius was probably referring to the cavalry of the Chameleon army when he wrote, In old times they had no cuirasses and were near and naked. While this is almost satanically an exaggeration, the Roman and Latin cavalrymen of this period seems to be lightly armored in the Italic tradition, some wearing large and small breastplates and uh, linothorax, I don't even know what this is, but many wearing no body armor at all. The Equites are recruited from among the wealthiest and most influential members of Roman society. Typically, a young Roman aristocrat's career began with service in the Equites. Many of the mounts, uh, the Equo Publico, ridden by the Equites, were provided by the state with funds raised by attacks on the widows and orphans. Oh my god! 
However, the Equites also received the service of the less wealthy men who were able to provide themselves with a suitable mount. Roman Equites are recruited chiefly from Latium and its immediate vicinity, while Latin Equites may be recruited from any region where Latin colonies found. And what do you bonus fighting cavalry, powerful charge? Etruscan spearmen. In ancient paintings and other art found in Etrurian towns of Tarquinia, Todi, Hiusi, and Faleri Veteras, Etruscan warriors most often appeared in hoplite style equipment. The warrior is typically armed with a thrusting spear, sword, aspis, and greaves. He is equipped with a bronze kiris or linen corselet, perhaps quilted or reinforced with bronze scales. He wears a bronze helmet commonly of the Italo-Corinthian, Attic, and Phrygian type, usually bearing a crest. The one Roman conquest of Etruria began in 396 BC with the capture of Veii was finally completed when the consul and Fluvius Flaccus took Vulcini in 264. From this time forward, Etruscans fought exclusively in the allied cohorts of the Roman army until they began, became Roman citizens themselves in 90 BC. An army of Etruscans and Sabines bore the brunt of the great Gallic invasion of Italy in 225 BC, suffering defeat and heavy losses near the Etrurian town of Faesula. Most of the survivors were added to the army of consul L. Emilius Paulus and took part in the Roman victory over the invaders at Telamon. Yeah, that's a famous battle. A few years later, shortly after the terrible Roman defeat at Cannae, an Etruscan cohort from Perusia is known to have joined the garrison in the Campania town of Cassilinum. Okay, so uh, one last thing before I close this first starting episode, and that is. Our future strategy. So as we notice that uh, RP is um, quite military active, same with uh, Aratium. I will create a first legion down south in RP and second legion down in Aratium, which will draw forces from nearby town. And while uh, this southern army, uh, yeah, the Southern Army will be read by Caius Ar, uh, Car Carius, well, Caius Aurelius Cotta, and he will draw his troops down south. There are several towns in the Southern Italy that we can take. I don't think we can take Messina and Syracuse right now, uh, even if we wanted, because there's a treaty running with uh, Carthage, and by attacking Masana, we will trespass in this uh, area and they will declare war on us. So that's probably not a good idea. But once we seize the southern Italy, we might send the first region up to join with the second region and advance up north. There should be several cities in this area and we will thus form basically Italy. Then it's on us to decide what we do. Either we invade Sicily and declare war on Carthage, while one legion would take Sicily and the second legion would um, sail to Sardinia and uh, Corsica and take these two, or we will advance towards the Gauls that are in this area and probably some other Germanic tribes. We will try to probably focus on increasing uh, the households in all of the cities first because they're quite small yeah, and the population isn't really growing anywhere. Uh, we need to look into that by building better hygiene or basically baths, uh, public baths and stuff like that if EB1 is any... Uh, any inclination here yeah, and there are garrisons, public or yeah, and building roads. That's well, basically at the very start. So, I'm gonna check the settings one last time because I think uh, the game did not reflect me changing some of the settings. And then I'll be back with episode two, or but actually, I'm gonna probably name this episode zero. So, with actual episode one, when we will start playing. <laughs>